Okay, it is time for our last endpoint, which is a delete endpoint. And as the name implies, it's there to delete a resource. So in our case, we can delete the bank um, using this endpoint. And what we do is we simply make a delete request to our API slash banks, and then slash the account number of the bank that we want to delete. And that's it. So there's no request body in this case. Um, there's really just the account number as an identifier in the path. So as a path variable, and then it should give us a 204 no content. So that's the best practice for delete requests if everything was processed successfully. So let's go right ahead into our IDE and implement this endpoint. So I'm going to start off here again in our bank controller test. And I'm going to create a new nested test class, this time saying delete API slash bank slash some account number. So I'm going to put this in curly braces for this um, display name, just to also mark it as a path variable. And then we'll say delete an existing bank. And in here, I'm going to create a new test case using the live template that we discussed. And then in here, let's say it should delete the given or the, the bank with the given account number. So given we have an account number of 1234, when we make a request to our mock MVC, this time a delete request to the base URL slash the account number, then really all we expect is that we get um, a status code of uh, no content. So no content. And also I'm going to again say, uh, do a print in between. And this one is quite simple. So I'm going to merge this again into one when then block. And really that's the only um, assertion that we need for this one. But later on, we also want to make sure that it has actually been deleted. For now, let's just go ahead and run this test case um, to have our first failing test case. Uh, and then we can run this again. Of course, I don't want to start up the application. I want to run our bank controller test. And then we'll start again our test driven development cycle. All right, there we go. We have our failing test, of course, because we do not yet have a delete endpoint. So it's saying again, method not allowed. So let's go to our bank controller. And in here, I'm gonna, of course, you might have guessed it, create a delete mapping, and I'm gonna call the method also just delete bank. Now in here, we're again using a path variable, just like for the get endpoint which is the account number of type string. And we're just returning unit. So unit is kind of like void in uh, Kotlin. So for now we can just open curly braces and do nothing in here, which is the same as having a void method. All right, so let's see what happens now if we run the tests. We do have a delete mapping now, so we have our endpoint. However, I forgot actually to use the um, the path variable up here. So just like for the get mapping, we just define whatever should come after slash API slash banks, which is again inherited from the overall controller. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this one from the get endpoint and let's try and run it again. Okay, so still a failing test. Let's take a look and see what's happening. So down here we have, we're expecting 204, which is no content, but we're getting a 200, which is simply the okay status. And we've seen this also before here where we wanted to have a created status on success. And so for the delete endpoint, again, best practice is to say no content if everything went um, according to plan. So let's just return the HTTP status, no content. All right, so with that, we can rerun the test again. And then hopefully we should be in the green status so red green refactor. Um, there's not really anything to refactor yet. So let's instead go back to our test and make this a bit more uh, comprehensive. So of course, after we've called delete, we also want to say that when we try to get this bank now, or we try to retrieve its data, we expect that it is now gone. So we expect the status to be not found. Okay, so with this, let's rerun the tests again. All right, so if we run the tests, but they're still failing, let's see and take a look if we can figure out why. Now, further down, we're expecting a 404, but we're actually getting a 200. 
So it looks like, of course, we're not really deleting anything yet. So this is why down here, we're not getting a 404 not found as we're expecting. Now let's go ahead and fix this by going to the bank controller. And again, feel free to do this uh, on your own as well uh, for practice and then come back to this video afterwards for the solution. But really we're just gonna uh, delete the bank uh, using the service. So again, we're gonna go through each of our layers that we build up. And in here, I'm gonna create the member function again, which is gonna delegate to our data source. Yeah, let's also just call it delete bank given the account number. And then I'm gonna use again the same syntax, even though it only returns unit, uh, which, which is kind of void, but it's really still a return value. So that's why we can still use this uh, short syntax here. And then in the data source, I'm gonna create the member function for deleting the bank. And of course, uh, again, in this interface, I'm not gonna write the actual implementation. Instead, I'm gonna to go to the mock data source and then down here, again, at the very end, I'm gonna say implement the members from the interface, in this case, delete bank. And now in here, what we wanna do is we wanna again look for the existing bank with this account number. So the same as when we updated the bank up here. So we wanna first check that we actually have a bank with this account number. But here we're just getting the account number, not an actual bank. So we can just do it like this. And if we do find a bank with the given account number, then of course we want to just remove it. So let's say banks.remove, not replace all, remove the current bank. And that's it. So there's no return value or rather it just returns unit. So that's already all that we want to do. And of course, if there is no bank with the given account number, we're going to again say no such element exception which should by now also automatically result in a status code of 404, meaning that no such bank has been found. So with this, we can rerun our test again. And then with this code, we're passing the test. Um, let's take a look in our bank controller test. So now we're actually testing that we can call the delete endpoint and it gives us a no content. And then afterwards, the object is actually gone. Let's move on to the non-happy test case down here. So I'm gonna create another one and I'm gonna say it should return not found if, if no bank with uh, the given account number exists. And here again, we're gonna say um, account number is does not exist. And we could of course extract this into a variable, which would be another good refactoring because we're using this one for, I think we've used it three times now. But for now, I'm gonna keep going with this test case. So when we make a delete request now using mock MVC, and we make it to the base URL slash this invalid account number. So I'm also gonna say uh, invalid account number just to make it clear. Then now we expect that we get a status code that is not found. And of course, I'm again gonna add a print in between for a debug output. And this is again, just one block for both when, and then we have our then, so our assertions or expectations. All right, let's rerun the tests and let's see what happens. Now, in fact, as I mentioned, we have the no such element exception. So yeah, this test case will already pass. Of course, you should have a failing test first, but I think by now we know um, what we're doing here with these uh, mock MVC tests and the end expect. So, yeah, I'm not really gonna change it here. You can also look at the logs and see that it's actually returning a 404 with also a request body that has the appropriate um, error message in it. All right, so this is all looking good so far. You know what the next step is. We're gonna start up our current application, our new extended application, and then we're gonna go into Postman and see this work uh, with the actual application running. So let's take a look. We're gonna get all the banks. So we have three banks available. And now if you make a delete request and give it a valid bank uh, account number here, we expect to get 204 no content. And then of course, if we now retrieve the list of all the banks, we get only the remaining two. And then in the non-happy path, we expect that if we just give it a account number that doesn't exist, we're gonna get a 404 saying it couldn't find the bank with this account number. 
All right, perfect. So it looks like everything is working as expected. I hope you learned something again in this video. If you did, please leave a like below and I will see you again in the next one.